Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. We're going to take a look at the developer tools that are included in the 1.3 release of Spring Boot. It gives us some really cool capabilities. One of them is dynamic reloading of the classes, which uh, will really speed up our development time. So I'm going to step through. I have a project here that's part of my Spring Core course. I'm going to work with that just for demonstration purposes. And we're going to take a look at how adding the Spring developer tools can truly speed up your uh, development time. So what we're going to have here, standard project, I'm going to step you through how development happens right now without the developer tools. What we have is a basic project here, it's a website. I'm going to run it right now. And we can see down at the bottom of the screen, we're doing a compile, we're bringing up Spring Boot. Spring is initializing, it's reading everything in. And at this point, my server is up and ready. So let's toggle over to Chrome. And we're going to do a refresh on here. And there's my, my page. So now if I want to go in and make a change to it, if I come in and let's make a change to the index page. This is a time leaf template. And I'm just putting in this is my change. If I come back over, if I refresh it, Nothing happens, nothing's changed there. And this is because Timeleaf out of the box is configured to cache the pages. So once the page is rendered, it's gonna get cached. Now that, that's a change that we can make to not cache the pages, which would allow us to see the Timeleaf templates uh, changes to those at runtime. But uh, that is a little bit slower to run. Not something that we wanna do in production, but for development mode, that would be fine. But if we do any changes to our Java classes, those still aren't reflected, so it only impact the time leap changes. We really want to see both of those. Just to walk you through the development cycle, if I want to see that change now, I've got to come back over and I've got to restart, restart the application server. So this, this is Spring going in, it's restarting Tomcat, and we've got to go through the whole cycle again to wait for everything to load up. And now we're, we're up and running. Now I can toggle back over to Chrome, refresh it, and see, see my change displayed. Adding in Spring Boot developer tools is a real neat feature that we can definitely speed up the cycle. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. It's just a matter of adding in a dependency, like everything else in Spring Boot. So I'm going to come down to my Maven Palm, and I'm going to add in the Spring Developer Tools dependency. So it's just a, a new jar that we have to include. Allowed Maven to, or IntelliJ to scan the package. Now, if I come in and refresh it, we're allowing Spring Boot to reinitialize. Now we're back up and running. I'm going to come back in and make another change to the index page. If I can spell change, right? And I'm going to build it. We need to build it in IntelliJ. Uh, Eclipse, you should not have to. And now we can see the change. Now that's not the only thing that we can do. We can also change Java classes. So let's go in, take a look at the index controller. I'm just going to do a system out to the console. So I'm just going to put some message out to the console and come in here, compile. Now we can see when the Spring Developer Tools detect the change, we saw down at the bottom of the screen everything got recycled and if I come in and refresh this now that loads real quick and we can see that we got that message and I was wondering well what if we actually change this does the whole spring context get get wired in and let's do a little quick quick experiment I'm going to create a new service I'm call him guru
Okay, so now I just created a service. I'm, I'm using a strongly typer. I'm not going to bother with creating it as a interface for this little demonstration. I'm violating one of my own rules, I know. I'm going to mark it as a component. Now I'm going to come over here. Through IntelliJ, if I hit Command N, I can bring up a setter for it. I'm just going to auto wire that. And what I've said here is I, I want that dependency injected into my index controller. And now I'm going to do another system out. If this compiles and we don't get something injected, we're going to get an all pointer error because nothing was initialized. Let's let's take a look at this. I'm going to go through and all I'm going to do is go up here to make project and we see that gets compiled and Spring reloads it. So now I can come over here. I'm going to refresh the page and invoke that controller and now we can see that the message was there. So the Spring context is actually getting reloaded in this process which is actually really cool. Now there's one more feature I want to show you. But wait! There's more! Now I've rearranged my windows a little bit here so that we can actually see the changes happening. And there, there's a component to the browser called Live Reload. And if you turn that on, it's supposed to be able to detect the changes. So I'm going to come over here, make a change to my template. Now I'm going to rebuild it, and we can see right away it gets picked up. See how quick the change got made. Now come up here, build, and there it is. It pops up right away, and we can see how quickly that that works. So what you can be doing here is quickly making changes to your web pages and and see the changes right away. This is significantly faster than what it was. Now the way this is working is actually really brilliant how the Spring team implemented it. You saw how fast the things reload. They actually have two class loaders and one class loader is for all the jars in, in your project. So all the static jars get tossed into the first ca class loader. Then the second lo class loader is for all your uh, application code that you're working on and that stuff gets that all reloaded. So the, the first class loader stays static so that, that gets uh, loaded one time and then when a developer tools detect a change in your class structure it's that second class loader that actually gets reloaded so all your classes get get reloaded so you're not depending depending on all the jars in your project to get reloaded into the JVM and can see how much faster it is. With that in mind I'm just gonna make a real quick change here I'm gonna change the, the string output and when I come up and I'm going to expand out this a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. So now I'm going to come up, rebuild the project, and we can see the make happening. So that's the compile phase. Now it's done, and right away Spring picks up the, the change. We deploy in, in just a few seconds. So it looks like it's about two, 2.6 seconds according to the message down at the bottom. That's significantly faster than reloading or restarting Tomcat to pick up the changes. So through this change, it, it is a brand new thing out on the market. I expect there's probably going to be some glitches with it. Um, the reloaded plugin is supposed to work for Firefox, Safari, and Chrome. I tried it in Firefox originally. I couldn't get it to work. So it's an independent plugin. Used, it looked like it was used a lot by the Rails community, adapted for this project, but that didn't work for me. But it is working for me in Chrome. It was just Firefox, and I didn't try Safari. And so far, the, the Spring developer tools has been pretty solid as far as the reloading hap is happening. So I expect you might find some uh, gotchas here and there, but uh, for the initial release, it looks pretty good to me. And I, I'm going to be using it for uh, developing web applications going forward.